Can you make videos on your process of deciphering, talking about how I study the Bible? I can. Just a fair warning, I take the Bible very seriously. This sounds like something that everyone should do, but you can see that that's not how that works in the normal world or on this app. Uh, for example, I believe God says what he means and means what he says. John 1.1, 1, 1, the word was God. I think God literally means the word was God. And if God didn't mean the word was God, then we have confusion. And God is not a God of confusion. He says what he means and means what he says. With that said, let's jump in. So the first thing I like to do is who is being spoken of or who is being spoken to. Uh, for example, the people that push work-based salvation will go to this verse right here. This is James 2, 26. For, for just as the body without the spirit is dead, so also faith without works is dead. So they will say that if you have no works, you have zero faith, implying that you have to work through your faith. Uh, and so they will take this and they will use this as a single verse saying that you must show works to prove your faith. But is that really what's being said? Again, who is it being spoken to? James 1.1 1, 1 tells us who it's being spoken to. James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. To the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad. Greetings. So it's not to the church, it's to the 12 tribes. So someone would have to dig in deep, why is this letter being spoken to the 12 tribes? Why is that important? Because this chapter, the book of James, is written to the tribulation Jewish people because the tribulation is for the Jewish people. God sent them in captivity in the Old Testament several times. That's how he's going to make them repent and receive the Lord Jesus Christ during the tribulation, the whole world is going to go through the tribulation, but the tribulation is strictly for the, the unbelieving Jewish people to bring them into repentance. So to try to take James and apply it to the church today saying you must have works is out of context. The Torah observing community on here and in the real world will say that everyone must convert to Judaism or they have to follow the Mosaic law. Well, who is the law being given to? This is Leviticus 1, verse 2. This is the book, the, the Torah book. Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them. It doesn't say speak to the Gentile nations. No, no, it is to Israel. We are not under the Mosaic law. The law was to the sons of Israel not the Gentile church. We're under a whole new covenant. Hebrews uh, 7, 12 says we have a new high priest that's not of the Levitical priesthood. And with that comes new laws. Yet people will take this and say, hey, you got to follow the Torah law. This is taking it out of context. The next thing I look for is what words are not in the original language? This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him. So you can see that unknown tongues is not in the original language. And, and it's, so it should say, for speaketh, which means talking about the speaker that speaks in tongues, speaks not men, but unto God. So what is this saying? Well, the charismatics speak in this jibber jabber language because they use this word because it's interpreted in the King James Bible as unknown because this is the best translation that they could possibly get. But if you take out this, you won't have the jibber jabber talking because it's not biblical. So we have to look at what the tongues is. The tongues is a known language. It is spoken by someone. So you see that the Pentecostals that speak in this jibber jabber battle babbling language, it's not biblical. They add this word and it's not in the original Greek language. So you have to study the original language to see which words are there and which ones are not. And if the Pentecostals would just see that the unknown is not there, well, guess what? They wouldn't be speaking in the jibber jabber language. And the third thing that I do is a word study on the the big words. Not he will be, you don't need to do word studies on those, right? But tree, maybe do it on there. Planting, you absolutely would want to do a word study on planting because if you read the, just the literal translation, uh, word for word, it says, he will be like a planted tree by streams of water. 
But that's not what it says in the original language. See, this word planted, uh, it'll be like a tree planted. It literally means transplanted. What does that mean? This means that the person that puts their faith in God, God will transplant them from the lifestyle that they're in and move them to another location that is full of prosperity, not necessarily financial, but spiritually be transplanted to glorify God. So you miss this in the translations and you only find this when you do a word study of that very word and it literally means to transplant. This means that if you're in Texas and God says, hey, it's time to go to Michigan or whatnot, guess what? You're gonna be transplanted to glorify God. So those are the three steps that I do every single time I study the Bible. There's other stuff like hermeneutics and stuff like that that goes in really depth of uh, Bible study. But with those three things, that's a good start. And uh, I do hope that it helps someone out in, on here or on YouTube or somewhere.